Ezekiel 12 and 21. Let's read. And the word, Ezekiel speaking here, he says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? He, he says, Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I will speak. That's what he says, I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged for in your days, O rebellious house. Will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Again, 26. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Behold, they of the house of Israel say the vision that he seeth is for many days. In other words, they're saying the vision that God has told them about is far off. It's way off. He said the vision that they seeth is for many days he, to come. And he prophesied of times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, that last verse, Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the words which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. Israel didn't believe anymore that the Messiah was coming Come the first time. They had rejected. Remember Jesus when He stood over Jerusalem and He wept. And he talked about how that Israel, he wept over them and said, Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, thou that stonest the prophets. Because he'd sent man after man, Moses and, and all these prophets we find here, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Haggai and Obadiah and all those prophets in the Old Testament, they came and they'd all prophesied of the coming of a Messiah, the, the, the one that was going to come and be born and, and he would be king, a ruler of all nations. and He would come out of the seed of David and, and as far back to Abraham from the seed of Abraham out of the promise that God gave Abraham. For when God came to Abraham, He said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless your seed, Abraham, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed from your seed. And it was the Word of God that spoke this to Abraham. And Abraham, if you remember, Abraham and Sarah was way past age of having a child. Uh, Abraham was about 100 and Sarah was almost 90. And Sarah even laughed at the fact that she could have a child at this age. But when God says something, it shall be done. When God says something is going to happen, it's going to happen. She, they tried to make it happen when He sent Hagar, her, her, her maidservant, in with Abraham. She had a child. We know that's Ishmael. But God said, no, no, no. He said, that's not the promise. And she ended up having another child 13 years later. And this was the promise, Isaac, that God said would come to pass, that God said would be done. And we were, we can, you can follow the lineage all through the Old Testament. It makes it a little bit easier to grab it all. There in the beginning of Matthew, in the beginning of Luke, when it goes through the genealogy of, of Jesus Christ. And you can see that all through the years and all the generations,
generations that passed that what God said He was going to do, and that was send the Messiah. Even Moses spoke of Jesus Christ uh, coming. But you know what? They got in a place that Israel was rebellious of what God said He was going to do. But praise be to God, we know that Jesus Christ came here the first time. We know that He was born of a virgin birth. We know that the Holy Ghost came up on Mary, who was a virgin and never knew a man. And she conceived in her womb and she bare a child. And she called His name Jesus. Kings come to see Him. Many come to see Him. He was born, as you know, people say, I was born poor. There is nobody born poorer than Jesus Christ. He was born out in a barn somewhere, wrapped in some swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. But what the people of Israel didn't realize, that what God said He was going to do, God had done. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something. When God says it's going to be done, you can take it to the bank however you want to say it. It will come to pass. And this man, Jesus, he grew up, we know, and it doesn't say a lot about him as a child. We know what he done when he was 12 years old. We read that little story. But it's, in the, it's when he's about 30 years old, they believe he was that John the Baptist had been out preaching. And he'd been out preaching repentance and baptizing people with water. Tell them, bring forth fruits uh, that are meat for repentance. Uh, he said, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, he said, there's one that comes after me. Uh, he said, I baptize you with water unto repentance. Uh, but there's one God has done told me. Uh, God has done spoken. Uh, that there's another one coming. Uh, he said, it's he uh, whose shoes latch it. I'm not worthy to bow down and loose. Uh, he shall come and baptize you uh, with Holy Ghost and fire. Uh, and one day out there while John was baptizing, he looked up and there stood the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the bride and the morning star. And he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And praise God when he dipped Christ down into that water. And Christ came back up. The Bible said the Spirit of God has descended down upon him like a dove and spoke out to the people and said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. You see, God said He was coming the first time and praise God, He came the first time. And we know what He went through. How He was rejected of His own. How He was not accepted in His own people. But He went to the cross of Calvary. He was obedient all the way to the death. And He died up on that cross because God wasn't just going to save the house of Israel because He done told Abraham. He said, Abraham, it ain't just you and your people going to be blessed, but all nations shall be blessed because of your seed. You see, when Christ died, that was the bridge that was built between earth and heaven, the cross, paved with the blood of Jesus Christ. That every man, it doesn't matter whether you're Jew or Gentile,
not lose that thought. When Christmas was over, you know, everybody wants to take part of Christmas. Yeah. Everybody wants to talk about Jesus and his birth at Christmas. I said, well, they've celebrated the first coming of Christ. Can you celebrate that he's coming again? Yeah, I said, can you celebrate Amen. that he's coming again? There's too many people, they just talk a little Jesus, but they empty on the inside. They got it on the edge, you know, they got the look on the outside. But Jesus found people like that. He said, you got, he said, you look like a grave, an old sepulcher that's all clean and white. He said, but on the inside, you're full of dead men's bones. Brother, when we ain't got Christ in here, we are nothing but a dead man or woman walking this earth. But life begins when Christ comes in here. God said he was coming the first time. Come on. But God also said, coming He's coming again. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. People today are like just what Peter talked about. If you read over in the very last chapter that Peter wrote before they killed him, we know they killed him because Christ told him. He was going to die a rough death. And in his last chapter of his second epistle, the third chapter, he said in the last days, there shall be many scoffers Come on. walking after their own lust, right. saying, where is the promise of His coming? Come For since our fathers fell asleep, things just keep going on and on and on and on. So we don't care about it. But Peter said these men are ignorant that in the old world, in other words, the world before the flood and Noah was out of the water. But when God said it was going to rain 40 days and 40 nights, brother, it rained. And it covered up the whole earth. And Peter said the old world, it was out of the water and then it was in the water. But God's got it back out of the water. But there is something that we need to be ready for. If God said Jesus Christ is coming again, and we're living in a day when people scoff at it and they mock at it. Somebody said, I ain't heard nobody do that. When people live, they don't have to say it. When you live an unrighteous life and an ungodly life in sin, and sin dwelling in our hearts, and we don't lay it down at the cross of Calvary, believing there's a higher power that's able to lift us up out of that life and set us on a solid rock in Jesus Christ. It is mocking us. Some people, I don't know why I got to put this on my heart, but I told you, come to me Thursday. And I'll tell you something about it because I'll never forget it. Last time I preached this scripture right here was about 15 years ago. And I was preaching a lot harder than I am right now. At a church. Got on to that about how the Bible says, Paul said our life, her name is James, says our life is even but a vapor that appeareth for a short time. It vanishes away. People's counting on tomorrow. People's counting on next week. Yeah, Brother right. Jesus said, I'm coming as a thief in the night. Right. He said, if the good man had known in what hour, that the thief would come. He said he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken in. And if you ain't careful and you're not watching for the second coming of Jesus Christ, you're going to find out no matter how you want to live or no matter what you want to believe, God's Word is going to be done. And if it said Jesus is a coming again, brother, I believe he's coming today. And Jesus is about ready to step out Amen. with the heavens open up like a scroll. Thank you, Bob. 
of us will walk out that door tonight. That's right. Come on. Because 15 years ago, the last time I preached this, we was in a church, a man sitting back, about five or six pews. That's right. I was preaching this text right here about how God is going to bring it to pass. You can be like Israel and put it off if you want to. It's not going to stop what God says it's going to be done. That's right. And I remember the Holy Ghost was on me. Now I can remember, and even now, saying you may not even make it to your car tonight. Right, you sure did, amen. And just a couple minutes later, all of a sudden I felt that just kind of stop, that anointing. And he was sitting back there, lifted up his hands. Yes, he did. And he said, praise God, praise Woo! God, praise yes, God. Woo! And he hit his knees. <coughs> gone from this world. Brother, I believe he's seen his angels oh. coming to get him. Somebody says death's a bad thing. The Word of God said precious in the sight of the Lord oh. is the death of his saints. I'm glad tonight that Jesus Christ is a coming. I, I want to keep on living and do everything I can as long as I can. But I tell you, I'm making myself ready. I'm making myself prepared. Sunday school a couple weeks ago about that, a chapter in Romans where Paul warns or God warns through Paul don't boast against the Jews uh -uh, you better be careful with your mouth that was God's firstborn that's what he called them he said they're the apple of my eye we're the wild branch that was grafted into this because of what the great love of God. Yeah. Woo! The love of God. That's what brought us into this. It wasn't nothing else. But Jesus is coming again. Yes, but these people, they got in such a bad shape. Not believing a Messiah would come. come on. Not believing a Savior would come. come on. They came to Him. The Pharisees came to Jesus. Lord, that's how the world is, seems like today. And even people in the church. Show us a sign. Jesus came straight back with the answer. There shall be no sign given right. except the sign of the prophet Jonas who was three days and three nights in the belly of the well. So shall, talking about himself, the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Woo! He's done been here once. Yes, he has. Brother, he's died. Yes, he has. And he rose again. Yes, he has. And just like Stephen, I believe with all my heart when Stephen was about to die and he looked up and he saw Jesus <laughs> at the right hand of the glory of God. Woo! There's coming a day. Come on, brother. And I, I believe it's so soon. Come on, There's man. coming a day when God is about ready to look over the table and say, Gabriel, set one foot on the land. And one
to escape the judgment that's come on this morning. In other words, you need to stay connected to me. The only way we hold on to Jesus is in our talk with Him, our walk with Him. Come on. You, you, you can't live a life of a Christian and, and being ready to leave this world or ready for His coming by going out here and jumping in the bed of sin all week long and coming in here and saying, well, God, forgive me. I'll be all right. Let's shout a little while and then run back out the door and live like the devil all week. Brother, God didn't save us to be like the world.
because she knows I love her. But when my sister stood up and talked about her daughter, that's my niece. Tracy is playing her sister. They're my nieces. That's Tracy's sister, Nine's daughter. I hope the reason Diane felt that way is God's getting her in a place because she backslid on God. If you watch this on the internet, God loves you. God wants you to be saved. God wants you to be delivered. God wants you to be free. God wants you to be Darkness. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to 
time I get in the light is when I have to stand before the light of man in the judgment. Because that'll be a sad day. You don't hear many people that are afraid to preach and talk about hell. Afraid somebody will leave. Hell's real. And if you're found without God on, on judgment day, it's the price and consequences that you'll pay. God didn't create, let me tell you something about hell a little bit before I stop. God never created hell for us to be in it. It was for the devil and his angels. But I'll tell you what, if you end up in there, it won't be because of God. That's right. It'll be because you chose not to serve him. You chose not to live this life. Every day that we live, we're choosing where our eternal home is going to be. How you living today? Where you at today? Are you ready to stand before the judgment seat of what will be?